Good morning and welcome to another video. Now today's video is going to be a bit different. I have made a video like this before and uh, it received quite a bit of positive feedback and that was the one where I built the perch for the woodpecker to photograph it in my garden. Um, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to build a reflection pool. Now before I start, I should say I have built one of these before. Um, I have a reflection pool up at my woodland hide up on the farm in Derbyshire and um, I made loads of mistakes. I've learned from those mistakes and I'm hoping today's build goes a little bit smoother. Um, the biggest mistake I made actually with that pool was that's built to my fixed hide. Today I'm going to be using this one for my pop-up hide. Um, so I built the last reflection pool fixed to my static hide um, and I made it too short. And as a result, I couldn't use my prime lens because of the minimum focus distance. Um, and also, I just didn't really like the fact that the birds were having to come so close to the hide for me to get images of them. It kind of made them a little bit more spooky. Um, so this time, I set my hide up a good five meters away from the end of the reflection pool or where I plan on having the reflection pool. Um, and it means that the birds can get nice and used to it. So it's worth me noting as well that in the winter months, I always put bird feeders out in the garden just to give the birds a helping hand. Um, and I've been looking out the window recently and we've been getting quite a lot of activity from your common garden birds like your blue tits, great tits, robins, blackbirds, stuff like that. And I thought it'd be quite nice to have a little project like this that's so close to home. So just off my garden, we've got a little paddock. So the background's nice and far away. Um, and that's where I've decided to put this reflection pool. I don't want to waffle on too much, so we'll just get started with the build. Um, but it's pretty simple, and I've been able to do it on a budget, mostly because I had a lot of the materials lying around here that were left over from the van build and other bits where we've been renovating the house. But you really don't need much to make one of these reflection pools. Just a few basic tools, some timber, and some pond liner. The only thing I did have to buy was the pond liner and that was 23 pounds. So all in all, this is gonna be a pretty cheap build and I'm excited to get it on the go. So first of all, and the thing that I've done different to my other reflection pool is this time I've gone down a simpler route and I've just got some old garden tables and I'm gonna use them as my base. Now, my other pool, I used loads of fence posts, um, six in fact, and I had to level them all out, use the post basher and get them in and um, whilst it probably looked a bit more aesthetically pleasing in the end, it's a lot of work. So this time I'm gonna keep it simple. I've got two old tables. Don't tell my wife, because she does actually use this one. And um, I just need to lie the sheet of OSB on top of these tables, get it all level, and then start building up the sides. So it's really simple. If it's not level, I can just put little bits of timber or patio slabs or whatever under the table legs just to level it out afterwards. So next thing I need to do is grab a timber and put it on top of the tables. So that's now nice and level-ish. Um, I'm not too stressed about it being slightly off at the moment because I can just make some tweaks once we've got the liner in, the sides on, and maybe even a bit of the water in because we'll see quite quickly if the water's run into any corners faster than others. But um, the next thing I need to do is build up the sides. Now, again, learning from my mistakes, the last one, I made the sides far too high, um, which meant, well, it meant a few things, but mostly, I had to put so much more water in, which made it harder to keep it clean. Um, and it was just a bit unnecessary, to be honest. When I wanted to put like logs and stuff along the edge and bits of moss, I had a lot more area that I needed to kind of cover. Um, so I'm gonna make slightly smaller edges this time. So I'm gonna do that now, which is pretty straightforward, just bits of timber all around the edge, screw it all in. Um, and once that's done, we'll get the pond liner on and I'll talk you through that.
I should also say the light today is uh, it's beautiful and I'm not going to complain about having some nice weather finally but it's so hard to work with I'm trying to film this and it is quite challenging I probably need to invest in like a filter or something but the most important thing is we've now got something that resembles a reflection pool which is really cool um, so put all the sides on that took about 15 minutes and I've just pulled over the um, pond liner a relief because it fits i bought it yesterday and um yeah i wasn't quite sure i thought it'd be more than enough and it is and that's great so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go around tuck in all the sides and then just staple it um again a mistake i made last time was i stapled it all quite tight as i started on one side and uh when i got to the very end and put all the water in it didn't sit flush so um this time i'm going to make sure there's a little bit of slack in in the liner itself when it goes down into the lips. So just a quick tip for anyone who's um, watching this um, as a tutorial. Um, it might sound really simple, but I made this mistake last time. Don't be tempted to put your staples on the inside. It sounds really simple, doesn't it? But um, you don't want to be doing that. No, where, where there's water, do you want any staples or screws or nails or anything like that? So um, I put them all on the outside edge. At the moment, you'll see it looks quite baggy. There's quite a bit of slack but as the water weighs it down, it'll fill in all these gaps, just like when you fill a paddling pool up. Um, same kind of concept. So I like to keep quite a bit of slack. And then once the water goes in, we can like tuck it all into the corners. And then if needs be, I can always put a few more staples in to tighten up areas. But um, yeah, don't be tempted to put them on the inside of the reflection pool. I say it because I've done it and it was very frustrating. But yeah, we're getting there, a couple more staples to go in. And then uh, I'm going to start putting some water in. We now have a pool with water, which is uh, pretty cool to see. And it's not that bad in terms of it being level, to be fair. This end, I've deliberately put a bit of timber underneath, so it kind of slopes more towards the far end where I want the birds to be. Um, it doesn't need to be as full at this end, so I decided rather than putting in loads and loads of water, just to prop this end up slightly. But um, it's getting there. It's now ready for me just to put some moss and anything that I want in. I'm not sure at the moment how I want it to look, so I think I'm just going to start with some moss at the end, maybe a couple of leaves. Um, and I'm thinking in time I might put a few little like rocks and stones and stuff in. But for now, I'm just going to start by trying to find some moss. I'm going to add that to the end and then we'll jump in the hide and see how it looks. So I think I'm pretty much done for now. Um, the only way I'm going to know kind of what I want to change and what I want to add is by getting in the hide and looking through the viewfinder and taking a few images. So I think that's what I need to do. But for now, what I've done is I've got a load of loose moss and I've soaked that 
and just pressed it all onto the ends and scattered a few leaves around. And then on this right hand side, I put in this really cool textured, you can hear all the birds waiting for me to leave so they can go on the feeders. Amazing. So I've got this really nice textured um, mossy fallen branch, which I found on the bank just next to the um, reflection pool. I really like it, but I'm not sure if it's going to be too big. So I've put it in for now. I think what I'm going to do is go inside, get my camera and lens, get in the hide, have a look through the viewfinder and see if I like it. But I think the only way I'm really going to know is when the birds start using it and I start taking some images. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab my camera and lens and we'll see how it looks. So I'm in the hide now and um, I think it looks really quite cool. I'm a bit disappointed with that long um, branch log that I've put in. I think it's just a bit too bulky like I thought it might be, especially when I'm looking through the 500, it just looks too chunky. And as we're gonna be photographing small birds, I think it's gonna to take too much um, of the image up, too much of the image will be the perch. So I'm gonna probably remove that, but um, other than that, the only other adjustment I need to make is there's just a couple of areas where when I look through the viewfinder, I can still see a bit of pond liner. So I just need to add a little bit more moss on. And then we're ready to start photographing in it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out the hide now, make those adjustments, and then I'm going to leave it for the evening. We're about to lose the light anyway. Um, sunset's in about 20 minutes. And I kind of want to give the birds some time to get used to it. So what I'll do is I'll give it a day and then we'll come back out in the next video and we'll spend a session out here photographing the birds at the reflection pool. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe so you stay tuned for that. If you are subscribed, I seem to be saying subscribed really bizarrely. If you are subscribed, thank you very much. I really appreciate your continued support. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help. And a comment down below. Um, it really, really does help with growing the channel. And um, I'll leave it at that for now. So I'll see you all on the next one.